So KB is going to let y'all know why we decided to choose this topic and what this episode is all about. So KB, um, what's this episode about? It's the question that we see on Instagram every day. <laughs> Welcome to Entrepreneurhood, where we break entrepreneurship down into three simple pillars, business, lifestyle, and motivation. Our goal is to use our personal experiences as industry leaders to guide and inspire young entrepreneurs to see the lesson in every challenge, because we understand that companies don't succeed, people do. Now, welcome the leaders of Entrepreneurhood, Lakeham and KB. Welcome to the neighborhood. You got your boy Lake Kim in the building and I got my brother KB in the building with me. We on episode 56 and we decided to call this one is credit king or is cash king. Right. So before we jump into the episode, KB and I, we want to introduce a new segment called W's and L's. And what KB and I want to discuss is each week we want to give you guys an update on either a win or a lesson that happened to us uh, from the previous week or yeah, from the previous week, because we don't take losses, right? So that's why we call it W's or L's. Our L's is lessons. So KB, uh, for this new segment, right? Um, what do you got this week? You Do you got a W or do you got an L? I'm definitely not starting off with an L. <laughs> <laughs> nah, I definitely have a W. Um... One of my clients, I helped her get a uh, 50K uh, in funding on 0% interest. Wow. So uh, the best thing about it, the number is great, but now she's able to maneuver and to have a business stay afloat. So, you know, it was very more impactful because she definitely needed the capital. And what, what did she, uh, what kind of business does she have or like what is she going to use a 50K for? Uh, she has a peer space business and she has um, a photo booth. Wow. So she does basically like, you know, event planning and, you know, she have her peer space booked out so people can do photo shoots, you know, a, a pinch, potentially do podcasts as well. So um, she has a whole like different rooms decorated. So it's really dope how she got her concept, but she needed more capital, you know, to get some more things, get some marketing done. So now she's like, I'm able to, you know, I'm able to breathe. I'm ready. I feel like I have a resurgence now. So the fact that she was about to give up and the fact that I could help her, you know, with just this single approval of 50,000 on one card, it was like, nah, this is dope. This is definitely a W. Yeah. And it's funny. I was just going to ask how, how did that make you feel? But I think you just answered that. So yeah, I think that's dope. You know, you started off with a, with a W me, I'm going to start mine off with an L right. <laughs> and, <laughs> and the beauty in it though, right. The beauty in it is, um, I, I think as an entrepreneur, you got to enjoy the lessons, man. I think the lessons is what really helps you grow week over week. So my lesson for that I had, you know, from last week was just the true value of leads, the importance of it, right? What I understood and, and I had an epiphany this week that, yo, really for anyone who has a business, the lifeblood of your business is your ability to obtain and close leads, right? Nice. And I was just thinking through the last few months and just the last few years of what allowed me to stay in business for as long as I did and just continue to grow year after year. And it's always having a surplus of leads. So now that you know I'm building my coaching business, you know, I've had phenomenal months and then I've also had months that it's kind of like plateaued. And the only difference, the only difference from my best months to my slow months is the quality and the volume of leads that I have. So um, once that epiphany happened, now I have a whole new system in play to fix that, uh, that slow season. So after this week, um, I'm never going to have that problem again of being short on having quality leads. So that's my that's my L for the week. That's dope that you did a, you know, analyzation on your business, because most people were just like, why is it not working? This is unfair. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> this is your business. You got to figure out what's going on. You got to be able to dissect this, your baby. So if your baby's crying. And it's like, I don't know what to do. You better figure out some options. 
Facts. Because I and I even have a saying, bro, that I feel like I don't mind doing bad. I just can't stand not knowing why, you know, or I don't mind having a slow season. I just cannot accept not knowing why I'm having a slow season or a slow week. So, you know, I as an entrepreneur, you got to adjust and pivot quickly. And I feel like um, from that epiphany and from that L, that lesson, um, I'm definitely making the adjustments. I respect that, man. How you, you, you start yeah. up with the L. So <laughs> next, <laughs> next week, we're going to get W. That's what I'm saying. And, and that's the beauty because we're creating a storyline week over week, right? So I'm starting mine with an L. KB starting his with a W. Let's see. <laughs> you know, who's going to have the most W's and L's, but all right, let's jump into it, bro. So what we really wanted to do is, like we said, we named this episode is Credit King or is Cash King. So KB and I, we've been understanding as entrepreneurs, there's power in both. There's power in credit and there's power in cash. So KB has, you know, jumped 10 toes into the financial literacy industry and, you know, in other words, in the credit field. So KB is going to let y'all know why we decided to choose this topic and what this episode is all about. So KB, um, what's this episode about? It's the question that we see on Instagram every day. <laughs> I'm tired of seeing it myself. Um, is credit king or is cash king? And it all depends on, you know, what part of the, the spectrum that you're at and, you know, where you at in your business or if you have a business. So I think this this episode is going to give people insight, you know, to really dissect what makes sense to them, you know, based on their circumstances. Because, you know, it's, it's just like you you watching, you know, watching a game, you ruin for both teams, both teams are great teams, but you like, you know what, I actually do like the Warriors better, way better than the Lakers. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> I don't like that example. <laughs> but, <laughs> you got to use a better example than that. But all right, go, go ahead. I'll let that one slide. <laughs> so, you know, depending on your squad, you know, if you have great shooters and you got one guy that wants to do every position, then you might like the Lakers better. What? <laughs> if you have the best shooter in the world, <laughs> then, you know, you might like the world. Yo, what is this episode about? <laughs> Hold on, we talking about LeBron or Steph Curry or cash your credit, bro? All right, so we all know LeBron's my favorite player, and he's the GOAT. Year 21, you know, still, he went from being the youngest player in the NBA to the, the oldest player that's averaging the most points. But we digress. So go ahead, KB. Um, yeah, so this is going to be a great episode. Definitely want to tune in. Definitely want to get your notes out. Um, we're dropping it, giving a game, um, pulling back the onion, giving you all the data points that you're going to need and to understand you know, the basics of funding as well. And I guess let's kind of just jump right into this, right? So a lot of the, the questions that people are saying, and you seem like those questions irk you a little bit. So I feel like I got to poke the bear with this first question. So a lot of questions that people are saying on social media is, KB, would you rather $100,000 or a 750 credit score or an 800 credit score? So if somebody was to ask you that question, KB, what would you say? Or what do you think people should say? I want both. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I would definitely take the 100 because I, I know what to do with it. And I think um, it all depends on, on your current knowledge and your current you know standpoint. Because if you have an 800 credit score, then what do you need a 750 for? And if you have a million dollars, but your credit is not right, and you're like, yo, I don't know. It's not, I'm not getting fixed. Let me just get the 800 or 750 credit score. So it's, it's all relative based on your situation. But I think people need to understand what do you want to do with it? Because money is just a tool and credit is a tool. Yeah. So if you don't have a plan outside of getting those things, then what are you really doing? You're just going to be a consumer. You're just going to spend it. Or you're yeah. just going to Because I feel like regardless of whichever one you have, if both of them are tools, it's just all about how do you know how to navigate both of them? Because it's like, bro, you could have a hammer and you could have, you know, a, a wrench. If you don't know how to use either one of them, they're they're pointless, you know? So I think it's all about your knowledge and how you how you plan on implementing them, right? 
So with this, uh, with this episode, bro, um, let's talk about like the importance of credit and the importance of cash. So what are some of the questions a lot of people have when they come to KB for help um, with credit and, you know, trying to get themselves on the right path? Like, what, what are some of the common things that people will ask you? Well, for starters, most people don't want to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like, it's like a secret. Like, they want to pull me to the side. Like, yo, can you, can you give me funding? Can you give me credit? Like, my credit is bad. I'm like, why are you whispering? Like... <laughs> Say Every, yes. <laughs> that's the thing about credit. It can always be repaired. I don't care how many collections, charge up, late payments you have. It's going to take some time, but it can always be repaired. I think that's a big like status quo for a lot of people because they, they we mess up because we don't know about it. And then when it comes to cash, everybody was like, yo, I want to make some money. I want to make some money, but don't even know the principles of what it takes to have a business or to build some type of cash flow system. So, and then after you make the money, you got to realize how do I protect it? Mm -hmm. You know, how do I not try to give it all away in taxes? How do I try to, you know, save a part, a portion of it? How do I invest it to make more money? So whatever problem that you're trying to solve, just know there's another problem after that, that needs to be solved too. And, you know, that's the part where people forget. And it's like, all right, I'll give you the 100,000. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. I give you the 800 credit score. What are you going to do with it? I don't know. You're going to apply for, you know, you're going to get a car, your dream car, or you're going to go ball out on sex, you know, get a section. Like, you got to really have a plan before you get the money. So most people are like, yeah, I don't want to figure that out until I get the money. And that's the part that irks the hell out of me. It's like, <laughs> you're not going to figure out how you want to make money for your business until you get the funding. And then that's why I tell people like, nah, you, you're working backwards. Yeah. And I feel like, you know, it, it's that's why people need to come to someone like yourself to develop a great plan. Um, so what's a what's a bad credit score and, and and what's a good credit score? Like what's the worst credit score you've heard someone say that they've had? And and how does someone go from a bad credit score like that to a good one? I think the worst one I think I heard was like 450. Oh my goodness. <laughs> yeah, it was it was it was bad. I think um did yeah. the parents put stuff in their name or it was all of them? I believe it was a couple of like judgments, like child support. Oh okay. bankruptcy. Um yeah, I think that was pretty and then of course collections and late payments and all that. So they just had the whole nine. Of everything, <laughs> but, but, you, um, did, were you able to save them or or, or nah? Nah, nah, nah. I wasn't. <laughs> nah, I'm joking. <laughs> nah, this is at a different time in my life. This wasn't why I was in front of the Oh, okay, okay. <laughs> but if you're out there now, I got you. I got you. I, I got, got you. Got you. <laughs> but yeah, I mean that's the thing. Like it can all. It will take time, but it can be repaired. So. I personally don't do credit repair, but my team, they handle credit repair. I focus on the funding. However, it can range for usually from three to six months. And if what the, the issue, number one issue with credit repair is that people still get derogatory marks during a credit repair process. Hmm. So meaning is if you post to get your late payments removed and as you keep going and during this process, now they got to remove new late payments. So it just keep prolonging the repair process. So that's why it's important to be disciplined and not use your cards, not to apply for anything. And sometimes they try to apply for credit during the process and it makes it even worse. Wow. So these, you know, and that's what it comes down to uh, accountability and understanding like, yo, you're not taking this seriously. If this is something that you say you want, you want to better your life and better your family's life. You got to take it seriously and got to have discipline. Damn. So now when... When someone does that, right, they, they go to you to to get advice, to get the, the process started with credit repair, and then they just continue um, applying for stuff or just continuing to make late payments. Is there anything that's in, in the agreement that says, hey, this is what you, you have to do during this process? Or like, how does that work? Yeah, I mean, I just let them go. Like. <laughs> You can't if, if somebody's gonna do that with credit repair, then they don't need funding. That so yeah, so when it comes down to credit repair process, the payments is up front. So 
if you keep messing up, you know, then it's like we can't keep, you know, supporting this because there's other people that need to be helped. So most of the time, people are, have a strong vetting process. Like the credit repair clients I take on are the ones that's going to get funded. Yeah. So I'm not helping people. Sorry to say it, but I'm not helping people just to help them. <laughs> <laughs> I'm helping them so we get to the goal. So if you're looking to get, you know, a house that's different because I could be a realtor, but if you're looking to go get a car, you're looking just to go, you know, have a good score, then, you know, that wouldn't be the, you wouldn't be the ideal client for me. So now what is, um, how quick does your team work? So like, let's say, you know, I'm a client that's listening right now. I have um, a 600 credit score um, or I don't know, like, yeah, 600, 580 credit score. And I want to get funding ready. How quick does your team work? So then that way I can be whatever funding ready means so you can help me get capital for my business. That's a good question, because that's usually the problem on the flip side when it comes to uh, credit repair. A lot of people take their money and they don't actually repair or it takes, you know, months. So and a lot of people got scammed before, you know, what come credit repair. So what I say with me, if you go through me being that funded is my focus, they have the leverage. And what I mean by that, I can't do my job until they do their job. So I'm only going to refer you to someone that's going to try to work with speed because I want to get you funded fast. You want to get your investors fast so you can make your money fast. So instead of going to somebody to do just credit repair, that's all they do. But I, there's another step for me. So as far as time frame, I've seen things happen in 30 days. Oh, wow. Um, less than 30 days as far as collection removal. And then I see some things take like six months. So it varies on a profile. But the way I try to strategically place it is that um, we want to make sure you have all your docs in order and then just be accountable to the certain steps that we might have to do during the process. Like, you know, creating logins. They lock your, uh, what do you call it? Your other bureaus, credit bureaus, just being available on the phone when they need you to be available. So, yeah, it can range from 30 to 90 days, I say, on average. Okay. But I I've seen some quick things happen, but I don't sell people on a quick, like it's going to come off in two weeks because that's not true. And that's like true with every profile. Yeah. And, and a lot of times the information gets, is hard because a person ID is different from the address. Oh, wow. That, that matters. Yeah. It matters because the, in order to dispute certain items, the IDs have to match. So most of the time, if somebody moved, they just relocated, they didn't want to update their license, or they just don't have a utility bill in their name, all these things plays a role with just credit repair. So you got to be able to allocate to a particular address. So when they send out these letters, they can have confirmation that you are who you say you are. Got it. Now, what about um, a credit score? Like for someone to be funding ready, like what's the data points that you look for for someone to be in a position that you can help them get capital. It's, it, yeah, it makes it sound real, <laughs> real tricky. <laughs> yeah, I'm just trying to, I'm trying to understand because I know there's because, a lot of listeners right now that they're like, yeah, Yo, I don't know. Because the, the credit score doesn't matter. And don't, it's not clickbait. <laughs> don't quote me on it. But it doesn't matter more than the profile. Oh. So what that means is, if you have a thin profile and a high credit score, if you have a 750, right? Or just say 800, well, you won't have eight, but 750. You have a 750 credit score, but you only have two or three accounts. When it comes down to funding, that's considered a thin file. Now, compared to you having a seven 700 and you have you know, a mortgage, you have a car loan, you have multiple um, revolving accounts, which is credit cards, that is way better than the 750 because- it's a it's a healthy profile. It shows a mixture of different accounts, and it shows that you are liable to borrow. And that's all credit is about. They want to know, like you want to know your street cred. So it's like, if we don't trust you with the thousand dollar card, how are we gonna give you the fifty? Yeah, you gotta see you work with the twenty first, maybe a thirty five, and then we go, you know, take a risk to give you the fifty. So yeah, I always tell people that is the most important part is the profile, but for actual data points of numbers you want 680 minimum but i always shoot for my clients to go over 700 so when they're doing credit repair um again credit repair is just about making the profile healthy it's not it's more so just getting the score because i thought the score was the 
the most important thing. Yeah, because it's a catch twenty two. Because if you make the make the the profile healthy, then the score will go up automatically. Got you. Unless it's a thin profile. Got you. So now, what have you seen? You know, was someone coming to work with you? Why should they work with you versus just saying, "All right, I'm gonna figure this out on my own." and go to the banks because a lot of people they don't understand why they should work with a, a credit specialist or like what's the title you you call yourself like i like call it business credit consultant yeah a business credit consultant okay so why should someone go to a business credit consultant when they could just go to the banks by themselves because like i don't want to pay you i want all that bread to myself <laughs> well one you shouldn't go to anybody. You should come to me because <laughs> I'm the plug. <laughs> but um, I tell people I just don't apply. I just don't uh, uh provide funding. I provide my resources as well because if you think just having funding is going to maybe have you run a full efficient business, you're wrong. Because after you get this funding, this capital, you're going to know how to. You're going to need a back end system. You're going to need assistance. You're going to need marketing. You're going to need all these other factors. So I try to provide my clients with as much resources as possible. Um, and then also, if you go into the bank, you might get three to, three to 10,000 on your own, which is, which is cute, you know. <laughs> but if you come with us, Infinite Wealth, to be exact, we looking to get you 50K, you know, approvals for certain banks. And um, 50K, 75K, the biggest I ever did from one bank was 250,000 from TD. Whoa, from one bank? Yeah, from one bank. And, you know, she was, you know, well-prepared, well-seasoned client, you know, had, you know, mil over a million in revenue, but she was qualified. So what we do is we have private partnerships with bank, rela um, bank relationship managers. So this way we are giving them files that's already prepped. And then, you know, we get through the door with underwriting because that's the, usually the part where people don't forget about. It's like the person that's filling out the app for you is not going to be the one that's going to approve you. They just pushing the file forward. So, yeah, we plugged up. We're very connected with a lot of different banks. So you can do it on your own. I'd rather people do it on your own because when they go on their own, I'm like, damn, I only got 3K. I'm like, damn, my client just got 25. Jeez. What did you do? What's wrong with your profile? Oh, I got a, I got a 720. How many inquiries you got? I don't know. What where, where bank where bureau are they pulling from? I don't know. So these these things you don't know. Each bank pulls from a different bureau. So mm -hmm. the main thing bureaus is TransUnion. Experian and Equifax. So you looking at your Experian like, yo, I got a 750 credit score. There's no reason I shouldn't get denied. But if you go to your Equifax, it's a 640. Wow. So that's why it plays a role. So we know where the banks is pulling from. We know exactly what they're looking for. So it's like, would you rather take a, the test on your own or would you rather have an open book test? <laughs> Facts. I definitely want the open book test, bro. And we giving you all the answers. So it's like, if it don't work out, then, you know, because I'll be honest, everything is not 99% approval, 99 approval. There's sometimes where you will get denied based on whatever, for whatever reason, might, might unverify your address, or they just might say um, you have too much credit exposure or you don't have enough credit exposure. Those things do occur. Not every app goes through. But however, the volume of certain apps we always have a more win percentage. Hmm. So and yeah, if, yeah and then and then in certain certain apps, if you don't get approved, we just you know wipe out the inquiry. So this way, it won't be stuck in your profile for two years. I think that's powerful, bro. Like that right there, being able to apply for something, and then if you don't get approved to get that inquiry removed, that's that's like an ultimate cheat code, bro. Because you know, there's been tons of times in the process of you know, the beginning stages of me, you know, starting my business and just being exposed to credit, uh, you know, trying to figure out like, all right, I want to try to apply for this card and get denied. And then now that inquiry stays on my profile for two years. So I wish I knew that, you know, back in 2017, because 2017 is when I think I got my first business credit card, my first business credit card. And I got approved for, I think, 25 or $30,000, um, you know, because I've, my business was doing really good. My business was doing over $500,000 a year. Um, and then I didn't even really need the credit. I just wanted to have it just to have it, you know, and then over the years, I've just been slowly adding more business credit to it. But 
I just think that's that's so interesting that you could apply for something, you know, it not work, and then you and your team are able to remove that inquiry. Is that legal? No harm, no foul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if it's not attached to your uh, open account, then it could be removed. Wow. That's sick, bro. So now let's, you know, let's talk about with the clients. Like, so what kind of clients do you work with and what kind of clients don't you work with? Like, do you just work with anybody? Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> right now, um, my focus is entrepreneurs that's in the beauty and fashion industry. Okay. That's looking to get approved for business credit because most of them, um, you know, my clients, they, they run it up and they run it up from Instagram, you know, through their booking link and getting clients, but they don't, they use everything out of cash. So when it comes to getting their studio, they're using their personal credit or they're using their own cash. They maxing out their cards and not realizing their utilization is going through the roof. So the business is going well, but on paper, they're looking bad because now they maxed out everything. So people forget the biggest advantage of business credit is that it doesn't report to your personal utilization as far as the cards that we go after. So in America, they know you got to spend money and make money. So if you run your business card up 100%, it won't be a negative effect on your personal. Wow. So, um, yeah, so clients in the beauty industry, you know, looking to get a salon, uh, their own suite. They're looking at more budget for marketing. Um, those are people that I'm focused on working now. I can help anybody, but those are people that, you know, I have different plugs and resources mainly with. Also, too, the people I do not work with, <laughs> the people that you're not that. like you got to be doing business so what that means is you know i don't deal with people that have ideas mm. like you know, I have an idea you know i want to nah you don't even have nothing going on like you just you don't have a blueprint now i can help you create your loc we could fund your business even if it's new however ideas and nothing else behind it no system no strategy no business model i, I can't help you hmm. So what's been like a, a, a pet peeve? Have you had any like crazy consultations within the last couple of weeks that, I don't know, like people just didn't come prepared or you, you've had to repeat yourself a lot, like anything crazy over the last couple of weeks? I think I had some earlier, a couple of months ago. So I've been doing real strong my vetting process before I even give people my link, like to speak with them because I think the craziest one is when someone was like, they was on the phone with me and they said they want to do something for real estate. So I'm like, all right, cool. I know real estate. You know what I mean? We can make this happen. And as we, during a call, she's questioning everything that I'm doing as if I don't know what I'm doing, but she needs the capital. Mm -hmm. So it was very interesting. She was like, and I was like, you know, towards the end of the call, I went through my whole process. I'm like, do you have any more questions? Everything sounds good. She was like, uh, no, I'm trying to figure out if I'm going to go with you or this other guy. So <laughs> there's no competition with me. So I'm like, why you didn't go with him already? And he's like, oh, he was charging me, you know, seven, eight percent. And I'm like, well, I would if I was you, I would take that. Because <laughs> if you're going to rate shop and try to figure out what's the cheapest, then you won't appreciate the best service that I offer. Wow. So, you know, that was one call that made me realize, like, yo, you know what? I have to end the call. If, I won't go through my whole process. If I feel that in the first 10 minutes, five minutes, that you're not going to be the client for me, I would end it. Like, right, you know what? This is not going to work out. Thank you for your time. End the call. So, um, yeah, that was, yeah, that was a, a L for me <laughs> <laughs> that I took a couple months ago and I learned from it. It's like, nah, I'm not wasting my time going through a whole 30 minute call or presentation for you to be annoying in the beginning yeah you, that, that, that's true bro because if, if she was annoying at that consultation before like y'all signed any documentation of working together that sounded like she was going to be a nightmare of a client yeah so i i definitely it was a w for me because i avoided that <laughs> but yeah you deal with people that know that know everything or just tiktok and instagram they get all the information from there, but they never ran an actual play. So those are the worst kind of people. It's like, yeah, I was reading about this and I saw this video. I saw that video. Did you do it? Nah, I wasn't sure. So why are you on a call with me? <laughs> so that's the first thing I established. Like, why are you on a call with me today? 
And that sets the tone because if you did these things and they failed, all right, this is the time, you know, to reach out. But if you're not trying to give me the full control to help you, then I can't serve you. Yeah. So what kind of free game would you give to somebody that's interested in learning more about funding or, you know, they're like, all right, KB, I want to try to do it on my own before I go to you. Um, you know, like what would you say to somebody that want to do funding, but they might want to try it on their own first? I would tell them to do it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to give you free game on how to work on your arm. Just do it. But no, I do have, a, I do have a, a ebook that has the qualifications of what you need for funding. Ah, okay. Yeah. So tell, tell, let's talk more about the ebook. So uh, what's the ebook about? What's the name of it? Like, what's, what's the value in that? All right. So the first ebook is for people that know nothing about funding and you just like, you know, I heard about it. I saw a couple of videos. I'm kind of interested, but I'm not sure. It's called funding facts ebook. So okay. if you could DM me, DM me on Instagram facts, F A F A Q S, and then you automatically get the link Um, from there to get the, you know, the next step and you're really serious, like, you know what, I want to do this. I've been getting denied. I don't know why I've been getting denied. I have the funding cheat sheet. Okay. So the cheat sheet will give you all the data points that you need, understand the benefits of an LLC so you can get approved, you know, whether you want to get the 100K from the bank. Now, if you don't know what banks to go to, then we can set up a call and we can strategize on, you know, based on your profile. Damn. So anybody could get the the first volume one of the ebook. Yeah, anybody can get it. Damn, that's dope, bro. So and, and I feel like that's that's so important, you know, as a as a business owner to be able to give give that away, you know, giving that away to somebody that if you are in the 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 space of wanting to learn more about, you know, credit, funding, all of those things, I feel like I would highly recommend you to look into the the ebook and what's the name of it again funding facts ebook right so the funding facts ebook i think that's definitely going to open up your eyes if you don't know anything about uh credit at all now what about so we've been spending a lot of time talking about credit right um so we said is credit king or is cash king so let's maybe spend a little bit of time talking about um cash right so well, what's your take on it? Like if somebody has an opportunity to like really secure a lot of cash or a lot of credit, um, you said you would go after getting a lot of cash. Why? Because you're using the credit to get what? Cash. Yeah. <laughs> and I think people forget about that part. You don't get, you get credit to get paid in credit. Everybody wants to get paid in cash. <laughs> True. That's that. Yeah, that's a good point. Yep. So, you know, to, to make everything coincide, cash is king, but credit is power. Mm. So ca cash will give you certain type of deals, you know, especially in real estate. If you come with a cash deal, you definitely can negotiate, have a stronger buying power. When it comes down to, you know, getting parking your money, you want to put in insurance policies. You're going to put cash in. You're not going to, you can't put credit in there. <laughs> So, you know, and then you can borrow against yourself and it continue to grow. So it's so many different things you could use with cash as leverage. And then when it comes down to your credit cards, you have to pay it down the utilization. So you would use that cash to pay down your utilization to give you a bigger credit score. That's going to allow you to get the capital to get more funded. I mean, get get the, uh, the profits because you want to create cash flow. Whatever business you're doing, you want to create cash flow, you want profit. And I think... That's the part that a lot of people forget about. It's like, no, I want cash. Like, <laughs> if, yeah. I'm, if I take the 100000 I don't owe nobody, I'm taking it. And I know what I, I can use for it. So for me personally, I would take the 100000 I would lower all personal and business debt, and then I would go get four hundred, five hundred thousand 500000 in funding. Mm. And here's the play. I would take that funding, and I will multiply it by putting it in real estate buying you know distressed properties fixing them up and after they get average after repair value i would take those profits like all right take that cash take some of my profits pay back my cards and now i could just go do that again then you go go refinance off that property you don't have to sell it refinance take the money out 
And now it's not even count as profit. It actually is actually just count as debt. So yeah. it's a whole nother ball game when you want to get, you know, technical how you could use both. But I don't nah, both of them are, are powerful because once you have that leverage, it's what you do with it. And I think by you knowing what you can do with it was going to help your situation. But yeah, a lot of people forget about the cash part. It's like, nah, I'm going to take the cash. Or you could use the cash as private lending. Like you could do private loans. So yeah. everybody needs cash. So it's like, you know what? I'm going to loan this person 10000 at 20%, 15%. And I want my money back X amount of months, X amount of days. Now you, you know, you're making cash, cash flow on that. True. Because I feel like being liquid is always, a, to me, being liquid is always a better play than, you know, being, I guess, liquid with credit. You know, like I I, I touch, you know, over $200,000 liquid before I touch $200,000 in credit, you know. So for me, I 100 percent agree. I feel like for me, cash is um, always the, the way to go. Um, and then over the last few years, I've just recently been you know, comprehending the importance of credit because I've always been in the mindset of like, yo, you know, I, I'm just going to make the cash first and then use the cash to pay off whatever I need to. But over the last couple of months and maybe the last two years, I've really been understanding like, yo, like Kim, instead of using all your cash, make the cash, put the cash away, but then start to leverage OPM, right? And, and, and not have to be less liquid. So I've been in situations, bro, that I was like very liquid. I had a lot of money put away and I wanted to buy things and all the things that I was buying, I was just buying with cash until I got to a point that I no longer had the cash that I needed. And then the worst situation is losing all the cash, not having good cash flow and then having credit and then using the credit to like, you know, try to save you but your cash flow is is low. So how long did it take you to get the two hundred k liquid? Um, probably th three. So so from 2015, 16, 17, 18, four years. Yeah. So that's usually the argument with people as far as time frame. Mm -hmm. Because if you got a good credit score and you have established LLC, you could get two hundred k in four weeks. Yeah. So that's where it defers. But however, with that 20K, that's not profit. That's not money that you just boil out with. You got to use that to get more money. Yep. So it's really for, you know, people in our community that don't know, don't have a startup that don't come from a trust fund or don't have an inheritance where they could have a 50K start, but they have a good credit score and they're probably working, you know, making you know, probably three, five K a month, but they don't have that extra money to put towards their business. Yeah. So if you fix your credit up enough, now you can have more credit than your actual income. True. And so it gives you that leverage. It's like a head start, but same way you could get there fast. That's what I'm saying, bro. You so go down, you can go down real fast. Yeah. And that's, and that's the caveat to it, right? Because I love the fact, and, and this is where I'm going to play devil's ad, advocate. I love the fact that people could get credit fast, but like, I want to say 80% of the people that I know that's gotten credit fast or gotten that large sum of money quickly, bro, they always seem to end up in a bad position or a worse position than before they had the credit, right? So now, I do understand that most people don't have the skill set to be able to, you know, save two hundred thousand dollars liquid within three four years. Most people don't have that skill set, but I would rather like someone learn that skill set, right? Learning how to make the money because you could get the credit quick, but you've never learned how to turn, you know, a one to a four. And most people they they. <laughs> In their mind, they feel like, yo, if I get access to this money, if I, I, I hear so many people on social media, bro, they was like, yo, if I have this money, um, I know how I'm going to flip that. I'm going to flip that or I would flip it like this. And then it's like, they, they really don't have a plan. They have, like you said in the beginning, all these ideas. And then it's worse when you give those people money that have an idea, but they have no proof of concept. They've never solved the problem before. 
Yeah, and I think that's why, you know, I recommend people doing it by themselves to see how hard it is. And then when they come to me and they see what I can offer with my team, they're like, damn, yeah, I'm glad we had this conversation because I either burn money or I messed up my credit. That's usually the people that I end up speaking with. And that's why, you know, it's one of those things where you're not going to believe in fire until you touch it. Yeah. And I think some people are like, yeah, you know, I got it. I don't need nobody. I've been doing my business by myself. But when you're trying to scale and go to the next level, doing it by yourself is even more riskier. Mm -hmm. And I think that's the part people forget about. It's like, I'd rather you get help. Whether you just build it from the bootstrap and you're doing cash, you're still going to need help to realize, to figure out how to, you know, control your cash flow and make sure your business is running sufficiently. What, whichever way you take it, but I'd rather people learn on their own with their own experience because you can tell somebody as much as possible, don't do this. I don't think you should do this. Yeah. And you're going to do it, especially people like you, you know? <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, you know what? They just got to got to learn. But when you learn, it's like, all right, damn, this shit hurt. So let me figure out a different way. Let me actually reach out to somebody. So, you know, my thing is, I used to try to prevent people from get, going to the fire. And it's like, hold on, don't go that way. And it's like, nah, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to push you towards it. Yeah, Go yeah. ahead. Go ahead. And once you see for yourself, you're going to realize, it's like, damn, I'm in a tight, a tight spot. I don't know what to do. So that's why I'm good at diagnosing people, problems and pains, and realize, like, all right, this is what you need to do for your situation. A loan won't be good for you. This is, you just started your business. I don't want you to have that constant overhead. Let's work on getting some line of credit. Let's work on using credit cards. All right, bet. You got a 0% credit card. Let's try to refinance your debt. So this way you're not overpaying interest every month. So we really dissect the client situation. No two profiles are the same. As many profiles I've seen, definitely not the same. And then some people, you know, they don't have the right structure for their business or they've been doing their business well, but they haven't been doing any taxes. Yeah. So- that plays a role too when it comes to funding, having your document straight. So everything plays a role. And that's why I tell people, we diagnose the situation before to say it's a, a cookie cutter type of thing where everything goes through the, the, the right way. And if you just do this X, Y, and Z, you'll be good. Now we really figure out what you need, how much funding you want to get. I have clients that want to get hundred K. I have clients that want to get 600. So we strategize based on the relationships that you have already with the banks that you already work with. Because you want to have a relationship with the bank so you can get access to their products. Got you. So I guess as we wrap this up, bro, so what would you say to somebody that, you know, they again, they want to work with you, but they're just, you know, they're not sure if, you know, what the real value of your service is. And obviously, I, I know you want them to figure it out on their own, like first, because they're going to have to learn the hard way of knowing you know, why they should work with you. But like, if someone is like, yo, KB, like, why should I work with you? And, and what could you do to like, really make sure that I have a good plan um, as I get funding and, you know, all of those things. So like, why KB? I would say I pride myself on being the fast and the best, the fastest and the best, because that's the type of service that I like when I, wherever I'm going, I want to be first class. If I'm in the spot, I, I want a section. I don't want to, I want to have this place to sit down. So I try to model the service that I receive to my clients. And if I do, that's the thing about certain places. If if you go to certain high-end places, if they mess up, they compensate you. Yeah. Whether you get something extra, you get more time, you get in a sorry, you get in a letter. So that's my thing. If if the if the risk is on me, then I'm gonna compensate you for whatever it is to make sure that we get to the common goal. But yeah, I want to deal with people that's serious and that's elite. So if you're one of those serious and elite people and you want to have a movement behind whatever brand you have, then that's when you should work with me because I'm going to give you other resources besides the funding because fund is not all what you need. And, you know, I have fun with it. I don't, I make, I give you the experience and you want to be educated in the process as well. So it's not like, all right, you give me your files, you don't hear from me. Nah, you're going to get a couple text messages from me often and it's going to be a lot of jokes. So it's like, it's enjoyable to work with me. Um, sometimes I just, I forget that I actually am working. Yeah. <laughs> I'm like, yo, let's get this money. Let's get this money. Yeah. 
So um, yeah, I make it a enjoyable experience and a learning experience. And then what, whatever business you have. So being that I'm targeting the business, I mean, the beauty and fashion industry, I'm well connected in that industry. So most clients, if they need like a model or if they need like a spot, I know people that do commercial real estate. I do residential, but at the same time, after you get these profits and you run into play, you're going to want to buy a house. Who are you going to go to? Come to me. Like, I got you situated. Then, you know, after you, you know, make all this money, you got to figure out how to pay your taxes. All right. we I got tax referrals to help for specifically for entrepreneurs. So when it comes to that, it's like, all right, I make this money. Now, how can I protect it? All right. I got different attorneys set up for you so you can put your stuff in the trust. So. Yeah, it's a one-stop shop game plan, but you gotta be connected. This is not, yeah, this is this is a way of life. This is this is infinite wealth. <laughs> and it sounds like you know, infinite wealth is is a lifestyle. It seems like it's it's a community, and um, you get all of you know your needs when it comes to business and the connections. So I feel like that's what I really wanted to you know you to touch on because people. There's a lot of people that quote unquote can't claim that they could help people get these results. But I think the the truth of the matter is they're just not as connected as you and, and they don't per they don't pride themselves on that high level of, of service. So I think that was a really, really um powerful point, you know, for you to share of anybody that's considering working with you. So is there like anything else that someone needs to do, like it, the first step, if they wanted to work out with you, would would you tell them to you know download the the free ebook? Should they book a call with you? Like, what's the first step of if they want to try to work with you? Yeah, if you if you're good and ready to go, and you had your mishaps and you did your research, I would say definitely you know book a call. We do a strategy call to see if you're eligible for funding, and you know that can be in my bio on Instagram at KV the Trainer, and. For the call, you want to make sure you have your Experian account set up so this way we can see your full profile and your FICO score. Because that's another thing I, I don't think we mentioned, but Credit Karma is your Vantage score. So it's not used for funding. Your FICO score is what the banks use to weigh your profile. And, you know, from there, you know, a complimentary call. First one is on me. The second one, we signing up. <laughs> yeah. And, um, yeah, we just be good to go. Like, come with all your questions. I love questions. It just makes me smarter, and I know I don't know everything. So come with all your questions. Come with all your things that you heard and all the things that you saw on TikTok, and I'll be happy to answer them for you. And we can make it happen. Hell yeah, bro. And I feel like, you know, that's that's the main thing. So to sum up, you know, we said it's credit king or it's cash king, and uh, I feel like the final verdict is in, you know, like, both of them are, are, are really important. You need you need cash, you need credit, right? But if you really want to take your business to the next level, you have to make sure you're in a good position with a, a great cre credit profile. And, um, you know, they, they go hand in hand. They're both tools. So what would you say, KB? You would say, you know, if for people who made it this far in the episode and based on the title, what would you say the final answer is? I would say... um. Give me the hundred K and I'll give you the seven fifty credit score. <laughs> but yeah, both of them are, are, are great. Uh, cash is king, and credit is power. Boom! Right, and you guys heard it here first. So uh, one last thing that we want to say is that if you guys are getting value out of listening to Entrepreneurhood, uh, we ask that you share this with somebody. Share this with someone that you believe could get some value out of this. Someone that's unsure of what they're trying to do in business, but they just need clarity. They need to hear the wins. They need to hear the losses and they need to hear the experiences. So if you're getting value, do KB and I a favor, share this with someone, give us a five-star review and let's keep growing the community. Entrepreneurhood. Anyone can start, but only champions finish. Now that you've completed this episode, you're ready to continue your journey by connecting directly with our hosts of Entrepreneurhood. Follow us on Instagram at The Entrepreneurhood to stay updated with the community. For each episode, the first set of listeners to tag us on Instagram and leave a five-star review will be entered into a drawing to get a free one-on-one -on -one coaching session on the topic of entrepreneurship with our hosts. Remember, there is no shame in struggling because we fail, we grow, and we win right here on Entrepreneurhood.